but I want to go over some similarities between these two problems, at least our approach to them. As far as the cutting is concerned, the thirds cake here had to be cut in half, and the half came from looking at this denominator. So I had to take that, those two pieces, and cut them each in half, which 2 times 2 gave me 4. Similarly, I had to cut the whole cake in half, which made those three pieces turn into sixths. On the other side here, I had to take this single piece and cut it into thirds. And so what I'm... See the pattern there? Okay. This is often called the arrow algorithm. So we cross to get our new numerators, cross just on the bottoms to get our new denominator. So 4 plus 3 gives me 7. 6 is the new answer. That's the same approach the cakes led me to here. I took my, my three-fourths and cut those into six pieces, which gave me 18 new little pieces out of 4 times 6, which is 24. And that single sixth was cut into four slices, and the six was also broken into 24. And so my answer there would be 18 plus 4, which is my 22 out of 24. And so the cake slicing here leads me to what's called commonly the arrow algorithm. So I took a concrete model using the cakes and the idea of a part of a whole and repeating and writing down what I did led me to an algorithm. Let's try that on subtraction. So to do subtraction I, I need to know two things. I need to know what the objects are I'm working with, what the heck is a half, And what the heck is a sixth? We know that we're using the part of a whole definition of a fraction. And then subtraction, I've got a couple options as to what that means. I could either use that subtraction means take away, or I could use the comparison model. And I find that working with fractions, I end up using the comparison model more often than take away, but take away works just fine too. So again, uh, I can't directly take a sixth away from a half because I don't see that shape in there explicitly. So one option is to go with what we did with the addition, is cut each cake like the other. So then I'll whip out my knife and I'll start cutting this cake into sixths, cutting this cake in half. I now have a grid on each of these that is two by six. And so I'm working with twelfths. And for comparison, this piece I could match with that piece. This piece matches with that piece. And then I have one, two, three, four pieces left over. And putting those pieces into a new cake, Dropping them in systematically, there's my four pieces. Oops. See them there? Now, interestingly, I see there's a lot of patterns going on here. One pattern is that there are two horizontal groups out of six, so I could say the answer is also two sixths. However, if I notice that this group of four, the way I wrote it, matches this group of four there, or that group of four there, I have one out of three possible pieces in the whole. So another way to write, write this answer is one-third. So playing with the pieces can help you figure that out. Now this problem would be really good for working with the pattern blocks. Oh, where'd they go? Because I can use a half and six. Oops, a half and six in the whole. So that would be nice. But the way I did it here also demonstrates the arrow algorithm because I cut each cake like the other. And then subtracting 6 minus 2 is 4 out of 12. I get a really quick answer out of that. Then I have to consider whether I should reduce that answer uh, or not. So let's do that one a different way just for fun. 
So here is my half, and here are my sixths. Now someone might, might notice that when they look at the sixth cake, there's this middle line that puts three pieces in each side. So rather than making all those extra cuts there, why not just take this cake right here and making a few more cuts in it? So I can take the half cake and turn it into six, and the six cake is already there. So putting some shading in here with my one half versus my one sixth, I can then match up one of these sixths with one of those. <clears throat> and so here what I've done is I've taken a half and rewrote it as three sixths. I'm comparing that with one sixth. And when I find that left over, there are two sixths. Now, two sixths can still be reduced, as I showed down here, to one third. Okay. So one thought that comes to mind when I look at these different approaches here is that the arrow algorithm just finds us a denominator. However, with this problem, I could have used a smaller denominator. Turns out sixth is the smallest denominator you can use, but you still had to reduce. Sometimes using the arrow algorithm, the answer does not need to be reduced. Sometimes using the LCD algorithm, the error error does not to be in, does not need to be reproduced, uh, reduced, excuse me. But interestingly, I, I find the arrow algorithm is easier to get a denominator. So then it depends for the particular person. Is reducing fractions harder for you than finding a common, the lowest common denominator? So you get a couple methods to work with there. I'll stop this video here and do algorithms next. Bye-bye.